Shall we start? Hello, Shorya. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, very warm welcome to everyone who's joined us today, both um, on the Facebook Live and also on this call um, on the on the Google Meet. Um, today's discussion is titled Lessons from Lanka, Crisis, Resistance, and the Way Forward. Um, and we have Comrade Central joining us today as our uh, main speaker. So we'll have about a half an hour uh, presentation by Comrade Central and then we can open up for questions and uh, have a kind of informal discussion after that. Um, please, please keep your mics muted so that there's not uh, much disturbance. Um, and yeah, then we can begin. Um, quickly, just a short introduction to Collective. Um, Collective is a student youth organization that was started in 2015. Um, it was started in Delhi um, and in the past I think it's been about eight months now. We've also been working in Bangalore. We've started a unit here as well. Um, that is a revolutionary left student youth organization. And um, part of our work has also been attempting to, to understand the manner in which uh, neoliberal politics plays out, um, particularly in the global south where we are also located. Um, so I will hand over now to Comrade Najib, who is from the Bangalore unit. And um, Nadi can give us a short introduction to today's topic as well as the speaker and um, yeah, and then we can begin. Nadi, over to Hello. Hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. Revolutionary greetings. So, as Comrade Shilom introduced, today's topic is lessons from Lanka, what we, the crisis, the resistance, and the way forward. And uh, so, the reason we are having the discussion today is to understand, you know, since we do not have a lot of clarity in what's going on in Sri Lanka, or to understand the left perspective of what's happening there. And uh, it's important to understand the history, the socio-political context of what's happening in Sri Lanka. And there has also not been, uh, there's, we have, there has not been a lot of narratives on the left analysis of what is happening across Sri Lanka. And what we, all, what we see is always only the geopolitical conditions which, which come out in the media and which come out in most uh, platforms. So uh, the importance is to focus on understanding the left perspective and also, the kind of impact the struggle, Sri Lankan struggle has on other countries, uh, including India, and how the majoritarian rule in the country and how the country treats its own minorities and how that can impact a country economically and like globally. And also, how this crisis would not stop in Sri Lanka and it would be getting extended to all other countries around, in and around Sri Lanka and Southeast, the global South as a whole. Having said that, uh, uh, Sandil, he's been working with Ilam Tamil Lagam. He's been the general secretary for, uh, of the left youth organization, and he's been working from for some time now on social and political issues, and also civil civil liberties in Tamil Nadu. He's been active campaigning for Tamil and people since 2009. So he will be talking on the history on the crisis of Sri Lanka, which is happening right now, and the situation on the priorities in Sri Lanka, the context, in the context of the crisis. End of 
state across a lot a lot of countries as well so some of the notable uh, events of tam ilan tamlagam are one is the the united nations team of three work together evidence of war crimes from the ilams in, Th- uh, in tamil nadu for the report and uh, there was another instance where under the banner of forum against war crimes and genocide they took the cause of elam to the human rights organizations operating in states like tamil nadu kerala and the pradesh karnataka delhi meetings across the state and yeah over to you comrade sandeep thank you rajit uh, thank you collective team for uh, uh, giving this opportunity uh, to discuss about the current lankan crisis and what are the lessons we can take out of that uh, so am i audible uh, vijay has given me few questions and he has asked me to talk in those lines uh so i have prepared i also prepared in the same way in the way he has given me the questions first question is about the ethno religious conflict and second one is about the current economic crisis and third is about the protest and fourth is about the ranil wickremesinghe's election and the future so i'll go on the same order uh, um, so i'll try to make my points in english wherever i find it difficult i will go with tamil someone can translate that uh, so the first question is no religious conflict the asal ethnic crisis is not uh, is, uh, is not just an ethnic crisis uh, but it is uh, expression of uh, geopolitical context of south asia and indian subcontinent uh, in fact for every nationality or every uh, country the location which determines the life lifestyle and development of the people if it is the island or peninsula or whether hills or rivers or the where it is located Uh, that that determines the history of the people uh island nation is sri lanka sri lanka is located in the mid of uh, indian ocean and it's located in the tip of south india and uh, this determines the history of sri lanka all along for the last uh, minimum for the last 3000 years so when we look at the outset i mean the south at the at the it appears that pak strait divides india and sri lanka but in but in the real sense in the political sense pak strait links sri lanka and india so state state uh, as an organic form of development to some extent whenever a state develops it will expand to the nearest nearby area uh, okay indian subcontinent it is powerful is uh, size people and its resources when compared to sri lanka so uh history of indian subcontinent continuously affected the historical development of sri lanka cultural development economic process social development and trade so whenever a state or emperor develops in india it directly extends to sri lanka either in the name of religion culture or dominance whether it is an ashoka emperor or chola emperor there is no difference so always sri lanka uh she wants to defend herself from the expansion of india in any form that is uh one historic peculiarity because of the location and the proximity of sri lanka the island with india from ages so before buddhism emerged in india in as in south india tamil nadu and in, uh, also in sri lanka there is some primitive form of uh, the hindu religion or uh, some some sort of uh, religious practices like that when buddhism rose in india it spread across the tamil nadu and it also went to sri lanka that is theravada buddhism so the emperor ashoka he himself developed this power in sri lanka and also the culture in the name of buddhist religion with buddhism as a religion Uh, sri lanka especially sinhala people developed it with distinct identity with that it could safeguard its 
itself from India to some extent. That is the after Buddhism went into uh, Sri Lankan island uh, with the distinct identity for the last uh, for the last 2,300 years. Uh, they developed it as an identity to defend the expansion of India into the Lanka. With SL ethnic crisis is in fact a, is an expression Indian expansion into Sri Lanka. So Tamils in Sri Lanka, you, you I mean, many of you might know, might have known that Sri Lanka, the southern Sri Lanka uh, is dominantly with Sinhalese. Tamil's homeland or northeast part of Sri Lanka is the where is where Tamils live. The the Elam Tamils, the Tamils whom we know as a national team who are fighting for uh, uh, I mean self determination or uh, independent uh, uh, Elam. The upcountry Tamils are Tamils who were taken from South India uh, to Sri Lanka during British period uh, to work in plantation. Uh, plantation uh, fields. So they are different. They are really of Indian origin. Whereas there is a general belief even in Tamil Nadu and outside that those who went there for survival, those who migrated from South India into Sri Lanka for uh, uh, employment, for survival, they are asking for a separate country, but that is not the case. The Northeast Tamils in the Northeastern part of Sri Lanka are, origin, are inhabitants of Sri Lanka and that island. And they uh, ask, they fought for the, uh, they are fighting for the right to self determination. So, from Sinhala's perspective, the culture of Tamils, I mean, uh, Tamils in northeastern part of Sri Lanka, it is similar to the culture of people in South India, particularly Tamils, Andhra, Karnataka, and Kerala. So, this common trend that affects Sinhalese, and they perceived Tamils as a tools and instruments of India's expansion. They, they saw Tamils as an, and the northeastern part of Tamil, northeast, northern part of Sri Lanka, as the entry gate for India's hegemony into Lanka in both cultural terms and so in the social development. In the other sense, as Sri Lanka is located in the middle of the Indian Ocean, from the oceanic point of view, I mean, uh, from the geopolitics point of view, it's always a place of attraction for superpowers. Not only today's superpowers of today, it has attracted uh, colonial powers and, uh, I mean, Dutch, Portuguese, British, and before that, uh, there was a Chinese invas invasion after uh, the Sola Empire fell down in 14th century. So, always it is a point of attraction as it is located in the middle of the uh, Indian Ocean. So their interest reflected in the political and econ political development, economic process, and also the ethnic crisis. Their interest means interest of British imperialism, interest of American imperialism, and the interest, interest of uh, neighboring country, India's interest, that reflected in every aspect of the uh, life of people living in, peoples living in the Sri Lanka. And also in the modern history in the last 100 years, ethnic crisis has been used as a tool for uh, intervening into the Sri Lanka for every power in the uh, globe, either it's uh, America or Britain or China or India. So this, with this intervention, because of the location and because of the historic animosity between uh, the island and the India, and the, uh, because of these reasons, there are intervention from outside into the island country. With that intervention, the people or nationality most affected are Elam Tamils because they don't have a state for themselves to protect. Whereas uh, Sinhalese as a state, legitimate state. So the system, when you are a state and in this world with this system of state, that itself has an immune, I mean, uh, inherent protection mechanism uh, to some extent in this, uh, in this, I um, mean, the post Vienna Treaty era or in this last 300 400 years. So, I have to quote a few examples how this enmity between, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Sinhalese and uh, 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 I mean, take it, took its roots 
against the hegemony of uh, Indian expansionism. When, uh, because generally there is a, it is not, uh, in its real sense, it is not an enmity between Sinhalese and Tamils. It is not an enmity between Buddhist religion and Hindu religion. In fact, initially Theravada went into Lanka. Then in the uh, second century, first uh, end of first century and the beginning of second century, Mahayana Buddhism went into Lanka through Tamil Nadu into the northern part of uh, Sri Lanka and then to uh, the southern part of Sri Lanka. So Sangha Mitra is a Buddhist monk, Tamil Buddhist monk from Tamil Nadu. He went to Sri Lanka, northern part of Sri Lanka, and he won, he won, he won, he won the uh, I mean uh, belief of uh, King Mahasena, and he converted from Theravada to Mahayana Buddhism. So this affects the Mahavira in uh, Magavigare in the southern Sri Lanka. So in fifth century only, the infamous uh, literature Mahavamsa has been written. At that time. For some 27 years, there is a Pandian king who ruled the Singhala part. And he was defeated by a Singhala king whose uncle, he only wrote Mahanama, he, he only wrote Mahavamsa. So for them, any invasion, cultural invasion, religious invasion will come, would come from India through the northern part of uh, uh, Sri Lanka, through Tamils. So uh, we need to protect ourselves. So, we need to protect ourselves with the concept of Dhamma Diva. That is one language, uh, one religion, one island, one state, and one king. Singhala religion, Singhala language, Buddhist religion, the land of Buddha. Sri Lanka is identified as land of Buddha, and one king, Singhala king and one state. This is the five uh, uh, oneness of the concept of Mahavamsa, similar to Iran, I mean, Shia Muslims, uh, Persian language, and uh, like the, I mean, that oneness which they have, with which they are fighting the, are resisting the I mean, US imperialism. So, before the rise of Chola Empire, before the uh, uh, the 7th century, 8th century, uh, Saivite entered into Sri Lanka. The conflict between uh, Magana, uh, Theravada and Maha, Mahayana Buddhism itself manifested into uh, Singhala Tamil uh, uh, conflict and uh, uh, Buddh Singhala Buddhist concept of uh, opposing uh, Indian hegemony uh, through this uh, Maha, Mahavamsa concept. This is the uh, uh, roots of this conflict uh, which goes back to 2300 years. When we get into the modern era, uh, the problem of nationalism. Uh, if you look into the nationalism in 1776, uh, the first uh, national freedom struggle uh, U.S. independence struggle is perceived as first national freedom struggle. Actually, nationalism, nationality, nation, uh, in a in an elementary sense, it has it has been wrongly understood as a conflict between two ethnicities, conflict between two different uh, people belonging to two, two different religion, or conflict or conflict between people belonging to two, uh, speaking two different languages. Whereas, the, when you look into the historical evolution of modern nation state, uh, the American independence is not a struggle uh, uh, between two different two uh, different language speaking people. It is US American people who fought for their independence against the British masters, British king. So, they both are speaking English only. Similarly, when you look into the French Revolution in, in 1789, from 13 years from American independence, that is not a uh, uh, French Revolution, it's not uh, I mean, a struggle against an external uh, foreign king. They fought against their own French-speaking king and they threw the king and they formed a democratic government. So, as the concept of nationalism and modern nation-state, 
the essence of that is democracy in uh, making the people above everything making the people as a deciding force throwing the king and they are uh, thrown they are thrown the everything into the museum though we have the the culture of uh, monarchy i mean uh, lenin used to say there is a landlord sitting in everyone's heart there is a culture of monarchy uh, even in uh, among the modern leaders and communist leaders too but that's different we have to uh, fight against that but the monarchy has become obsolete in the last 300 years with the with the arrival of nationalism the concept of modern nation state uh, uh, the monarchy has been thrown out in the second phase of development of nationalism it is the struggle of uh, uh, struggle against the colonialization indian independence or sri lankan independence that is the second phase in this thing so any foreign domination any foreign oppression has been part uh, in the name of nationalism but unfortunately both in india and in sri lanka they uh, forget the essence of uh, nationalism they went to the in india they went to the vedic period they took the uh, i mean that uh, the veda setrigalai meedum eduthu kondundargal in sri lanka the singhala buddhist nationalism they made it a, made it as a fight against christian monasteries they uh, took the concepts took the ideas from mahavamsa so they went they went into the palame trikul avanga pona whereas nation this especially anagarika dharma bala uh, one of the uh, conceptual person of uh, singhala buddhist the nationalism he uh, he uh, uh, i mean he made christian monasteries as a uh, missionaries as an enemy so they he made it as a fight between uh, buddhism and christianism uh, in fact the first riot uh, is against uh, christians in 1883 in an easter day then in 1915 muslims have been attacked by uh, singhala uh prayatars then only they came into the uh, other minorities like tamils so in fact uh, uh, in the, in the post in the pre independence era of uh, sri lanka many anglican christian leaders they converted into buddhism if you look into jaya jayavardhana or sts sanayaka their uh, william richard jayavardhana their uh, original name would be a christian name even Rajabakshe's Mahindra Rajabakshe's wife she is a Christian. So when she married Mahindra Rajabakshe, she converted into Buddhism because then only he could succeed in the politics. If he marry a Christian woman, woman, he could not succeed in the politics. That is the development of Singhala Buddhist supremacy in Sri Lanka. So the Article Twenty Nine, which has been brought as a protection of minorities by the British. Uh, when they when they left sri lanka that 29 is article 29 is itself meant to protect the singhala catholics but that is interpreted as an uh, article to protect other minorities also so this the the tragedy of nationalism uh, becoming a uh, singhala buddhist uh, supremacy in sri lanka uh, similar to some some sort of hindutva na- as to the history and they brought the uh, buried uh, kings uh, buried vedic literatures into modern era and similarly they did mahavamsa so that is one tragedy which has happened in uh, in uh, in asia and um, the other geopolitical aspect of this ethno religious ethno religious conflict is generally you would have known in wherever british ruled they 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 support the minorities and uh, they support the minorities and with minorities they will manage the majority or they will they will with my using the minorities they will uh, put some obstacles to the uh, anti colonial movement in india when if you uh, in winter during uh, when the minto morley reforms have come there is an uh, in 1909 Uh, there is an uh, agreement for uh, reservation for muslims and that day wife of min 
Nato on that day, night in, in her diary, she wrote that we have signed a diplomatic agreement to stop six tours people in this country to join the uh, uh, anti-national activities. They said, "Rogan, another one is in the Nato will argue with Makkal. He will put a ramal to the other. Can a Raja Dandra Udan Badi ki under into Kaiyala than that? So our mind, the uh, I mean." Uh, Uh, embracing the minorities or uh, supporting the minorities uh, in the name of supporting the minorities they want to keep them away from the anti colonial movement that is the general the divide and rule tactics of uh, british people that we normally used to speak but in the case of sri lanka when tamils are the minorities were the other minorities why did the british government when they when they left sri lanka how come a majoritarian unitary constitution formed in sri lanka We may, you may, you may, or you have to get such a question. Uh, uh, being a student of, uh, I mean, uh, political science, the thing is, in 1920, uh, geopolitics is first about the land, land, and then land is in the, I mean, uh, inseparable with sea, in the, in the world politics. The so Tamil leaders, 1920, one famous leader, Arunachala, he said that. The independent Sri Lanka will be part of India. In fact, Sri Lanka has not been captured or colonialized by British for the for the resources over there. In fact, Sri Lanka is the place to control the India. Sri Lanka is has been located in such a place where to control the such big India. Uh, the the geostrategic location is important, not not the market or the not the resources over there. So when minority Tamils in Sri Lankan island, they the leaders of the Tamils, they have an idea that uh, merging uh, Sri Lanka with India. In 1927, when Gandhi went to Sri Lanka, invited by a Jaffna uh, Student Congress, uh, they invited Gandhi and they gave one lakh rupees for Indian freedom struggle. So this, uh, in the geopolitical perspective, this disturbed uh, British uh, British colonial masters. So in when 1930, when the No More Constitution has been introduced in Sri Lanka, that has that 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 is a unitary constitution, giving power to single majority and making minority as a subordinate. So from 1990 in the 1920s only, in the background of background of uh, the end of First World War, and uh, there is a McIntyre theory for uh, uh, I mean uh, ruling the entire world. With with all this background, Mackinder Thierry is a British uh, army person who wrote which, which are the strategic location which has to be uh, controlled to control uh, to control control to rule the entire world. So uh, with this uh, background only, British started supporting single majorities. The first constitution which gave power to single majoritarian unitary constitution has come in 1930. Then in 1948. Similar uh, uh, Solbury Constitution is also with the same concept as Donamur Constitution. As soon as they got independence, they with the similar Citizenship Amendment, Citizenship Act, which uh, uh, BJP government has uh, brought in, T S Senanayaka he brought a Citizenship Act and uh, I mean and, uh, I mean uh, and uh, refused citizenship to the ten lakh plantation workers. in sri lanka so i think with this i will uh, stop the history of this ethno religious uh, conflict because from then onwards it is like uh, they started uh, i mean uh, introducing singala only act and few standardization act then resistance from tamil then armed struggle and all that is a different but conceptually these are the roots these are the reasons how it has uh, uh, developed in such a way so uh, uh, in the last 70 years Singalis were, to some extent, success. They sold themselves to various imperialisms, but they reduced the population of Tamils in Sri Lanka, and they were successful in doing that through various through various means. So, uh, I will stop this here. I think I have taken more time on this part. So, I'll go to this current economic crisis and uh, just put the important points in the history. So. The, even though I mean uh, there is no like Jawaharlal Nehru, there is no I mean the uh, uh, bring, uh, building a modern industrialization, 
there is no modern such modern outlook in the leadership of uh, sri lanka in the beginning so 1948 when gs tanayaka took power they i mean uh, made that the economy of sri lanka dependent on plantation textile industry and there is no modern industrialization in sri lanka 20% small I mean, small commodity production is up to 20% only 80% of their uh, commodities have been imported in fact being an island they are importing the tin fish that is the uh, reality so uh, but post second world war everywhere in the world there is the welfare is some welfare states were so that so those policies were there in sri lanka in 1976 in asia sri lanka is the first country which stepped into the globalization and liberalization policy 1977 jaya jayavardhana brought in when uh, the liberalization has been brought into sri lanka in the political front the executive presidency has been introduced so whatever modi uh, is modi government bjp government they are attempting to do a uh, executive presidency model democracy or model uh, rule in india such executive president executive presidency uh, constitutional change has been done in 1978 along with the introduction, introduction of uh, uh, liberalization 1979 prevention of terrorism act has been introduced so these things happened in a couple of years from 1977 to 1979 uh, so there are uh, resistance from the labor front also there is a, a view point perspective that to uh, deviate from the resistance from uh, workers uh they started i mean a rule a ruling class started uh, uh, i mean uh, aggravating the ethnic crisis in 1980s uh, that, that is one, one another perspective uh, so uh, they initially in agriculture uh, 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 communication real estate uh, us investors and european investors were there until 2005 uh, that is the situation in 1980s they changed it into a military economy in fact from 1983 to 2009 they have spent around 200 billion dollars for their military expenses now 51 billion dollar is their debt but um, uh, four times of that uh, 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 amount has been spent for uh, uh, this um, uh, military expenses so they changed their economy into one military economy uh, post 2000 Uh, especially from uh, uh, 2000 after 2005 when rajapaksa uh, uh, got into power and there is a uh, economic depression in the us and 2008 the subprime crisis have come with this background from 2005 the investments of china uh, earlier it is uh, invest, uh, investments of uh, us and euro uh, are more from 2005 china uh, china was gearing up and they started investing uh, in sri lanka in uh, communication uh, in the infrastructure so the trade deficit have been continuously uh, more uh, in sri lanka the trade deficit which has led into the drain of foreign reserves in uh, 2019 so the ambandota port uh, initially the project has been started with some 1.5 billion but uh, uh, sri lanka I was not able to meet with the uh, debt in 2017 they have given it for uh, lease for 99 years and colombo port city that is another uh, project it is a 16 billion dollar project and there also they faced difficulty in uh, uh, giving the debt back so uh, that has that has also been leased for 99 years uh, in fact uh, okay the, uh, uh, so leased to uh, china for 99 years so china has uh, some the you the, the belt road initiative a silk road economic belt project maritime silk road project and ice silk road project there are three different projects they are attempting the maritime in the maritime silk road project the pearl of strings the important harbors in the south asia and southeast asia have been connected by china so one such harbor is amban but such a uh, it's a very when you compare with the trigonamalai trigonamalai harbor and ambandota harbor ambandota harbor is more beneficiary uh, instead of trigonamalai so china focused in the ambandota uh, harbor and there is a harbor in pakistan gwadar and there is an harbor in myanmar sitbi and uh, um, mia the bangladesh the chitagang harbor 
Myanmar, that is one harbor, and uh, one more Southeast Asian country. So these harbors have been under the uh, control of China. So these are the string of pearls. And there is a 3,000 kilometer road and rail project from the western part of China to Gwadar uh, Harbor. So these developments have been taking place after 2005. Prabhagaran, the chief of LTT, boycott the election between Ranil Vikram Singhe and Mahindra Rajapaksa in 2005. And uh, Tamils boycott the election. Singhalese chose Mahindra Rajapaksa as the president of Sri Lanka in 2005. So that led to the uh, I mean, uh, upper end of China in the Sri Lanka. So, continuously for 10 years, Mahindra Rajapakse, uh, till 2015, Mahindra Rajapakse were in power. In 2016, Sri Sena have been pulled out of Andriga, Kumaratunge, JVP, Muslims, uh, Plantation Tamils, and Northeastern Tamils. There is the large grand coalition between all uh, various uh, communities in Sri Lanka. That coalition has been formed by US India ally against the Mahindra Rajabaksa, Rajabaksa family who are perceived as the uh, as aligned more towards China. So that is the game. Ranil Vikram Singhe is more aligned towards Mahindra Rajabaksa, Rajabaksa are aligned more towards China. So from 2005 to here, from 2005 to 2015, the presence of Mahinda Rajabakse or Gautam Rajabakse in, the, in their position, that led to the formation of uh, uh, Indo-Pacific policies of uh, America, the uh, recently formed Quad and AUKUS, so much of focus in the uh, South Asia and uh, Southeast Asia, all uh, are, are, are determined by the this power uh, I mean, uh, uh, change of leadership in the Sri Lanka. And one decision by Prabhagar and the boycott of election, that decision, that is the role of people in the, uh, in the uh, lo being a locomotive of history. So that decision has played uh, too much of uh, uh, disturbances in the, in the geopolitics. So, when they, if they are if they're able to connect uh, West China to uh, Gwadar, then instead of depending on the Indian Ocean or Pacific Ocean, they from road, China can take its products and uh, come to Gwadar, the harbor in Pakistan and Baluchistan province. India cannot uh, make Baluchistan as a separate country. It could have, it's something, if it, should, if it had done it, it could have done in the before Cold War era in 1980s. Now, uh, in this era, it is not possible. There, are, there is an illusion among the Indian bureaucrats that they could still make Balochistan into a separate country, but that is not possible in this era, in this uh, uh, subcontinent. It, it, could have, it, it should have been done in Cold War during Indira Gandhi's period. So, uh, from West Asia and Africa, they can bring into the products to go other and they can take it directly to China. They, they need not depend on the uh, Sri Lanka. So, 2019, uh, one thing is 2016 West-led camp was successful in bringing Sri Sena, Ranil Vikram Singhe into the power and uh, uh, then Singhala Buddhist uh, intellectuals, they formed a think tank called Vietnam. They decided that in overcoming the external influence, we should bring our own uh, people into the power and uh, they formed a think tank. And 2009, 2000, uh, uh, nine, the Easter bombings, which has affected the uh, uh, politics in Sri Lanka. So we, we fought against the terrorism, I mean, Tamil terrorism, and we won the war. And we, we are the capable leadership to fight against the terrorism, uh, especially uh, after the Easter bombing. So with this background, Gautam uh, Rajapaksa again came to power. He was the president and Mahindra Rajapaksa was the prime minister. So, 2019, again, Chinese influence has become more. So, then Corona came, tourism fell down, and the policy of the, in the agriculture they depend, uh, depend more on US uh, imports. So, to change that, to become, uh, to that year uh, they uh, instead, of, uh, instead of importing the fertilizers, the Gautam Rajapaksa wanted to shift it towards China. 
So this decision has drastically affected the agriculture producers, and these things led to, uh, I mean, uh, 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 a very uh, fuel. Uh, so these were not essential things uh, 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 hundred years before, but now these things have become an essential part of life uh, that do for urban uh, middle class. So the uh, there is a I mean similar to Arab Spring, there is a protest, spontaneous protest, and uh, especially uh, it was it is driven by the urban middle class, uh, the class the class nature of the struggle would be the urban middle class and the university students uh, participated. So I think the, the third question is about who are all the players in the struggle. So uh, uh, it's a spontaneous struggle. It's an urban middle class based struggle. And uh, there is no concrete ideological leadership in the struggle. And one thing which I could say is like uh, in this, uh, I mean, Sri Lanka is one country where transition of power would take place very smoothly. It is not like Pakistan. There is no uh, military regime or military coup in Sri Lanka. Nothing such happened in, there is one such attempt uh, uh, somewhere in 1960s or there is, but it, India would not allow such military coup in, this, in, it, in our uh, neighboring country. So, uh, it's a smooth transition of power through ballots. That is the that is the history of Sri Lanka. This is first time outside the constitution, outside the election, uh, when in the parliament for three years, they have they have been forced to protest to resign from their post. So, sixty uh, Raja Bhakti said that sixty five lakh single is. Uh, voted for me, so uh, according to constitution, I have. Uh, uh, I mean, I I could stay in power for two more years, but all things have gone. So JVP, I mean, uh, in 2011, JVP, Janata Vimukti Pramuna, a left party, it has uh, it has got split. So so a frontline socialist party, there is one group which came out of JVP. So JVP has its hold in trade unions, whereas frontline socialist party has its hold in the university students. So, Inter-University Student Federation, the Anaitha Manavar, Anaitha Palgalai Kalaga Manavar Kutamipu, that is driven by Frontline Socialist Party. But ideologically, or with respect to nationality question, Tamil question, there is no difference between the position of Frontline Socialist Party or JVP. There is some organizational differences, whether how much to participate in the election, how much to be in clandestine, or how much to be open. Those organizational differences were there between JVP and uh, the Frontline Socialist Party. So, uh, they they are uh, important players in this struggle. JVP, gender, JVP has some, always a youth base. Uh, another uh, rival of uh, Ranil Vikram Singh is Sajit Premadasa. So, he is from oppressed caste. Premadasa from, is from oppressed caste, Dobi caste. Generally, JVP would have their base among Karayas. That is also oppressed caste. The uh, Singhala upper caste is Goigama, uh, equivalent to Tamil Vellala. So, the royal families of Singhala upper caste would generally be in power. Either it is the Saranayaka family or Bandaranayaka, sorry, Bandaranayaka family or Rajabakse family. Now, Sri Lankan politics has reached a stage where the family leadership from Saranayaka family or Bandaranayaka family, someone from this well-known families who could come and give a leadership to people is not there. That is the crisis. So some new leadership has to come. There is no leadership among the ruling class to address their interest, to satisfy the people, ruled people. That is one crisis. Whereas in the JVP, uh, they tied up with Mahinda Rajapakse. They supported uh, furiously the war against Tamils. JVP, uh, proclaimed the Mr. Rajapaksa into the war when he has some reluctance. That too in the 2009 in the March, when Rajapaksa has, has some reluctance to uh, he use heavy weapons, uh, JVP only uh, advocated to use heavy weapons, even though the people have been uh, caught up in a very small area. So they they proclaimed it and now they apologize. So we, we at that time we advocated for using heavy weapons in the March. April of 2009, but that is wrong. That has resulted in the so much of uh, killings. So now they, so till 2011, Frontline Socialist Party, which is majority, when they came out of JVP, 
they were part of jep so those decisions of supporting this uh, genocidal war so the, the the stand between them is uh, i mean uh, uh, not different between the jep whereas now when they went to jafna the groups protesting groups went to jafna frontline socialist party uh, uh, kumar gunara gunaratna he went to jafna and they say that now we support the uh, right to self determination of tamils so they some activist in jafna they asked that will you be able to uh, give a uh, prakatanam or give an uh, resolution in uh, galley face that we support try right to self determination something like that so he said that it is uh, uh, premature at this point to uh, i mean killings so one singala journalist basana abeyvardana he is in exile in germany in one of his speeches he said people i mean the protesters have anger towards sajab baksha's family for the dynasty politics for the corruption for the tragedy of this economic crisis and for the uh, stores, uh, stealing of the treasury or people's wealth but they do they don't, don't have anger of killing of tamils when someone is a thief and killer what you will say he is a killer first then he is a thief so we will charge someone for the uh, larger crime what Uh, he or she has done. So, but but the protesters, uh, but they are sympathy to they have sympathy towards Tamils. Uh, now they express sympathy towards Tamils uh, uh, agony, pain, and killing, sufferings. But uh, uh, too much, uh, I mean, so much of politicization and so much of education is needed to reach that level. Whereas on the Tamil side, uh, they were reluctant in joining hands in, in northeastern part of uh, Sri Lanka, that is the homeland of Tamils. they didn't join in the protest which is the, which is happening from march 15 to uh, this uh, july 9 uh, so they didn't join in the protest in fact tamils did vote for uh, rajabaksas but tamils demand is not only sending rajabaksas to home the gotabaya rajabaksa is a war criminal he has to be sent to jail he has to be Uh, sent to international criminal court for investigation that is the demand of tamils in fact even we from tamil nadu we have uh, we organized a conference in april 9 so we welcome the protest of uh, singalis and we uh, i mean we we said that tamils should participate in the struggle and raise their demands also when they say gotabaya go home you say gotabaya go home and he must be arrested for his crimes he must be arrested for his innocent crimes turn their uh gun and stewards singala protesters they cannot do the span they are protesting space democratic space at this point of time one thing they can expand the space then they can express to the world that we are also a party in this we are also a, a group in this island with our demands at this point of because the entire world and entire powers are focusing in sri lanka so they can express their presence and their demands at that point of time but they didn't do till now so even now there is no leadership among the singala ruling class so tamils can raise their right uh, demands of right to self determination demands right to justice and the the, the demand the, their demand of uh, justice for tamils uh, especially an international investigation for uh, towards the perpetrators of war crimes crimes against humanity and genocide del crimes so they must do it but uh, and they must join hand at this point of time but uh, the things have to things to get develop and reap and will take more time it will take uh, years maybe 10 years maybe more than that but even last 13 years have gone after mulli vaikal it's not much big development so in, in the point of view of history 10 years are at the decade is nothing they are fighting for years and years seven seven decades 70 years so uh, tamils uh, must think about that and the singala sites also i am uh, one thing what we are discussing now is indian ketam serpu ketam mari kala vetrathu abindra mari india's push uh, i mean with the instead, instead of recognizing the homeland of tamils instead of the recognizing the right to self determination india want to india is talking about some power devolution for the last 33 years after indo lankan agreement the 13th amendment which is obsolete 
in the presence of 13th amendment only genocide has happened so 13th amendment is not a solution political solution for ethnic conflict that is the portion of ltt that is the portion of tnr at times tnr raises the demand because india has a responsibility to insist to the sri lankan state to implement the 13th amendment under the merger of northeastern part of uh, sri lanka uh, to make it a single province uh, but india is not doing it because in now the post corona situation india used the struggle of sinhalese people and made it as a bargain and protected the sinhala ruling class and achieved few military and uh, economic projects from sinhala Sing ruling class india protected gotabaya rajapakse with the embassy with the help of indian embassy only he moved to maldives then to singapore and india uh, i mean uh, west wanted ranil wickremesinghe to uh, come to the power so in, uh, in now india at this point of time india don't need the protest or struggle of tamils to make a bargain with the uh, uh, sinhala ruling class or sri lankan state so that is the scenario i mean uh, emerged after corona they this time in the, this phase or this cycle they used the sinhala protest to uh, the uh, sinhalese protest to make a bargain with sri lankan ruling class to protect sri lankan ruling class i mean uh, modi spoke in tamil nadu that democracy stability and economic recovery democracy is nothing but majoritarianism stability is against revolution stability is nothing but uh, uh, i mean uh, they i mean just a change of regime in fact us led camp has achieved out of this protest they achieved the uh, bringing rajapakse to power from power and the placing uh, ranil vikram singh you know i mean unp is the party with this which didn't one didn't win single seat with some rep, with the vote it has got uh, ranil vikram singh is the only one member of parliament in the steel in uh, sri lankan parliament representing unp but they didn't even win with the votes only he has been the representative uh, electoral model in sri lanka which enabled ranil vikram singh to get into the parliament now having just one seat he has become the uh, president of sri lanka voted by the party of rajapakse gotabaya rajapakse's party voted uh, ranil vikram singh so uh, india i mean uh, the point is uh, north eastern merger is part of indo lankan agreement so the any solution must be based on uh, uh, recognizing tamils as a nationality north eastern part of tamils as a homeland of tamils and right to uh, recognize right to self determination that is one thing and whoever coming and speaking about this uh, lip, lip servicing like 13th amendment that is that is just lip servicing yet dmk speaks about that tr balu spoke about but tambi durai from admk spoke about that and modi or uh, jay shankar uh, spoke about that yeah, even uh, sajit premadesa he, sp he he is speaking of 13th amendment but our point is you first release the political prisoners you first remove the military from north eastern part when you are you are spending 1.5 billion to 2 billion dollars for military to place uh, six military uh, one military person for six tamils in north eastern part of tamils you first remove the military you first imf is also putting a condition to reduce the military so whoever is sympathetic towards tamils whoever cares about tamils first you start with the demilitarization you start with decolonization you start with releasing the political prisoners then we will talk about the political solution you first start with let's see uh, as a, as a part of good gesture as, as a part of belief hope a building hope you start with that so let's start with the immediate demands let's start with the small demands and see who is sincere about those demands in tamil side in indian side and in also in sri lankan side that is what uh, uh, we are advocating from tamil nadu we are uh, now advocating or we are now uh, talking among the singalese among the election of ranil wickremesinghe uh, the alagam permal uh, who is uh, 3% uh, uh, contested in the presidential election in the parliament when 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 the president before ending his term if he quit presidential if he, if he stepped down from president presidential post because of illness or because of any reason then a president could be elected from the parliament from par members of parliament so uh, in the in the sri lankan parliament ranil wickremesinghe contested and alagam permal who is who is from the party of rajapakse who is in fact brother in law of rajapakse so he contested and the, the leader of jvp contested jvp got just three three votes alagam permal india wanted here this is one inter
till india pakistan is needed this is how west perceived the asian politics but india didn't want to in her zone of influence india didn't want someone who is more close who is closer to us so india didn't want the ranil vikramasinghe to win the election so india india uh, i mean india supported alagam perumal and india has asked tamil national alliance tna to vote for alagam perumal so there are 10 votes for tna seven seven of them voted alagam alagam perumal because if ranil vikram singh won uh, that is that is a, i mean a, the, the contradiction between strategy and tactics even though us led uh, india in the camp of us Uh, india still wanted someone uh, who is uh, i mean who is closer to her not us so but uh, the, the interesting thing is at the end of the day in the election day both the rajapaksa said that we only we only planted uh, alagam permal to contest because the sajit pramadasa and uh, my sirisena sirisena they have some around 80 uh, around 35 51 plus 24 75 votes if someone contested and they were able to make it out it will be a problem so they want to they want to make their own planting and uh, uh, pull in the votes of sajit and uh, sirisena into their bucket so in, that is the diplomacy of rajabaksa rajabaksas so in fact then uh, then ranil vikramasinghe said that you have supported you are india supported uh, alagam perma so next day indian embassy has given a statement that no 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 we didn't support anyone in the uh, sri lankan president election but there is a call from embassy to tna and tna supported uh, alagam perma and he has got some three members from tna who didn't vote for uh, alagam perma perma and they might have been bribe that is one uh, thing they are speaking about so this, this is how uh, ranil vikramasinghe has come to power now like uh, advaitam yegam uh, parabrahmam endru uh, like yegam parabrahmam in advaita philosophy uh, it looks like two but it is one gopadama rajapakse left mahindra rajapakse now idgp international truth and justice project yasmin suka has demanded singapore government to arrest or take action based on universal jurisdiction uh, uh, towards uh, gotha rajapakse so now in the parliament of sri lanka they are telling that it is the responsibility of ranil vikram singh to protect gotha rajapakse from war crime proceedings so it is your responsibility to bring in gotha rajapakse safely into sri lanka so mahindra rajapakse basil rajapakse everyone there in parliament they voted for gotha rajapakse voted for ranil vikram singh only gotha baya was outside now today uh, ranil vikram singh yesterday at this yesterday ranil vikram singh said that is still the time it is not reaped enough to bring gotha rajapakse that's what he is telling he is not telling that we cannot bring him back now it has become the responsibility in the shoulder of ranil vikram singh ranil vikram singh to bring in gotha rajapakse with the diplomatic insulation safely into the sri lanka so that is going to happen so it is not two it is just one so in uh, so now there is no leadership so either india america or china no one can bring in uh, law and order or stability or a conducive environment in sri lanka in near future there is going to be confusion there is no leadership uh, among the ruling class in uh, single side so this is the scenario so some I um, mean, protesters, JVP or frontline socialist party, they have to come up with uh, uh, some political party. And Tamils now they are singly sir anti-governmental. Tamils are anti-governmental and anti-state. So Tamils want don't want. I mean, singly is uh, progressive singly is don't want a constitution with executive presidency and uh, PTA by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Whereas Tamils don't want a constitution with the unitary rule. don't want a constitution which gives uh, uh, utmost importance to buddhism so these are changes these are the change in the system what uh, tamils want and what singalese want so any progressive singalese must start with questioning the unitary constitution changing the unitary constitution into a federal and uh, 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 changing the giving importance to buddhism as a utmost importance so uh, let's see uh progressive people join hands together there and let's see uh i mean uh, uh, tamils get justice in sri lanka and uh, at least the protesters i mean the, there is uh, they they i mean there is a strong 
ஆன்டி ஐ மீன் அமைப்பாக்கிறதுக்கு பிகமிங் அன் மூவ்மெண்ட் பிகமிங் அன் ஆர்கனைசேஷன் தேர் இஸ் எ ஸ்ட்ராங் ரிலக்டன்ஸ் அமங் தி யங்ஸ்டர்ஸ் எவ்ரிவேர் இன் இன் ஹியர் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ இன் சிங்கிள் இஸ் சோ நவ தே செட் தே வி டோன்ட் வாண்ட் பார்த்த பிராஜபக்ஸ் பட் தே டோன்ட் வாண்ட் தே ஐ மீன் சம் லாஸ்ட் ஃபோர் ஃபைவ் டேஸ் பிஃபோர் ஜெரமி கார்பின் இன் லண்டன் ஹி செட் யூகே ஹி செட் சி வி நாட் ஓன்லி வி ஹேவ் டு ரெசிஸ்ட் வி ஷுட் பில்ட் ஆல்சோ so the point is we say we don't want this we don't want this we don't want this but what do you want what is the alternative so that is the question in front of the singala protesters so the frontline socialist party they are putting for people's council and so many things like a soviet model uh, those things are there but uh, still long way to go to bring in such a change systemic change in sri lanka thank you for the support thank you very much sir um i know we gave a lot of questions and there's lots to cover but uh, thank you for going into detail on um, this which is a uh we can open for discussion now if people have questions you can either unmute and ask or put it in the comments uh we can take questions from the comments also i'll read them out uh hi can i ask a question um this is a very small question about something you mentioned that uh, uh the sri lanka used to have to import tin fish uh, even though it's an island nation like w- what was the historical like situation at that time like what how did it, even though they had like a fishing uh, fishers community why did they have to import tin fish so not only i i i i quoted it as an example because they i mean from the days of ts saranayaka their economy primarily dependent on tea plantation textile industry and tourism uh, they i mean uh, one thing is the trade deficit in whichever area we could be self sustained uh, we have to be and whichever area we were not able then that there they could get into importing the things but uh, uh, they they have i mean being a self in, in the developing a modern industry in the, in the developing a modern industrial economy uh, modernizing the agriculture and uh, um, self uh, making ourselves self sustained in these areas the ruling class i mean comparative bourgeois is ruling class of sri lankan state they didn't focus in these areas so they were they were uh, i mean the uh, one thing is they were into this uh, liberalization and uh, in 1977 very small economy so dependent on very few these three industries and they changed their economy into one war economy from 1980s so that is the i mean the the the, the ideology of leadership in singala ruling class they are not modern enough they are racist uh, and uh, they are supremacist and uh, so there is not i mean there must to 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 build a country uh, uh, i mean build a country in the all sense the economic and uh, social sense uh, all sense there must be leadership not physical i mean a party which focuses in those areas uh, so when we leak you on in singapore he has said once about the sri lanka he has said that we didn't go into the past we didn't make uh, i mean even though china chinese chinese speaking people are majority in singapore there are people speaking tamil also so we didn't go back and remove english as the uh, primary language and make chinese as the uh, uh, first language as sri lanka did uh, making singhala as the first language so we we learned the experience from that so when you started focusing on ethnic conflict when the, when the leadership when their let us focusing on this uh, fighting against their own people and uh, building a military economy for such a small country how come they focus on uh, uh, i mean it is not that they are uh, they are uh, uh, self sustained uh, in uh, certain things and they stop it somewhere 
That is what uh, they open the market and it is coming. They don't have their own production. Yeah, yeah. There is a question from Chandra Gupta. Should India take uh, lessons from? I would say uh, India needs to take lessons from so many countries. <laughs> India. India, after this 70 years of independence, India didn't take lesson from any other country. 70% it of its, its military uh, things it is importing from uh, foreigners, foreign countries from Russia, Israel and US. Such a country with 138 uh, uh, um, crore population, uh, it is not, uh, I mean, uh, in, in technology or in every, every area, it is not... Uh, Championing in this world, or it is not contributing to the world. So in the in the, in the last week in Parliament uh, outside in the, in the Parliament campus, Jay Shankar briefed the situation. I mean, our external affairs minister Jay Shankar briefed the Sri Lankan situation to the parliamentarians, uh, especially uh, the lead, uh, leaders from Parliament, uh, various parties of Parliament, especially to ADMK and DMK. He said that with respect to economy, the economic sense. It is not that Sri Lankan government has given freebies because of that the economy has fallen down. Fell down. Sri Lankan government, uh, in fact, cut the, uh, uh, the money in the uh, It has implemented the uh, neoliberal policies there. So, Sri Lankan, uh, as I said before, it is a military economy. Uh, so, these are the reasons uh, and uh, uh, huge trade deficit. So, these are the reasons uh, and that drain the foreign reserves. So it is not about the freebies. They add some welfare, some policies of welfare state in uh, uh, in 1950s to 1980. So uh, they have some uh, the health, uh, um, uh, health and education. They are in some arenas they are better than India. But that is not the reason why uh, they uh, fell down. And India should take lesson from the. Uh, the majoritarian politics, I mean, Singhala Buddhist supremacy, because uh, they, uh, I mean, uh, uh, they uh, they started with the majoritarianism, racism, then uh, 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 refusing citizenship to Tamils, then they killed Tamils, then they uh, huge massacres they did, they burned the libraries, and they fought against their own people for decades. And they killed, at last in 2009, they killed around one and a half lakhs people. They, they did a genocide. <coughs> so now there is a warning among uh, this genocide watchers that India is also heading towards a genocide against uh, her minorities, uh, religious minorities, especially in Assam and Kashmir like that. So if someone raises questions against uh, genocidal murders, then they are also remanded and put in jail like this, the settled war. So, Already India has thousands of caste and they are fighting among themselves. So now they started, uh, I mean, now they are uh, aggressively fighting against minorities. So this 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 will stop. I mean, uh, the crea bringing the leadership, the leadership of a country or uh, a community should be to bring the creative energy from the people. On, uh, Singapore used the uh, skill, creative energy of the Tamils for the development of Sri Lanka. Whereas, I mean, the, the Jaffna Tamils would be compared with the Jews in their uh, uh, IQ. There is one uh, finding like that. They could have used this uh, uh, knowledge and skill, the creativity of the Tamils, Muslims, and uh, uh, already they used the revenue from plantation Tamils. And with that only they have developed the infrastructure of Sri Lanka. They put roads, rails, everything. So they could have used this for the development of Sri Lanka. Similarly, Indian government should take lesson from Sri Lanka that should stop this uh, Hindutva nationalist politics, exclusive nationalism, and they should be inclusive enough to use the creativity of Muslims, oppressed caste and tribes for the development of uh, the children and women. Thousands of, of them are standing in the streets every day, uh, Muslims. The energy of this energy, creativity of this, uh, the, the citizens of this country, which are supposed to be channelized towards the development, innovations, technological uh, 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 development, 
uh, but they have been they have been trained into streets to fighting up within ourselves. So that is the lesson India should take. And also, uh, I mean, uh, the, it, it is not going to happen in near future. Some economic crisis which happened in Sri Lanka that uh, Jay Shankar also uh, clarified. You don't simply just don't compare Sri Lanka with India, and uh, they will not let superpowers. They will not let uh, India. Uh, very quickly, sir. They, they now they brought in the chess championship uh, into uh, uh, Chennai, uh, which should have happened in uh, Russia. So, uh, so data-based uh, in foreign investments are going to come to India. And even in COVID period, investments from West uh, come more to India than China. So between this, uh, 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 I mean, uh, China, America, this contradiction. Will West, uh, West and uh, China contradiction is giving more space to Indian uh, uh, capitalist, Indian ruling class. So they would survey for a while when compared to China. Singular Gulu, Tamil Gulu, one of the Sarah Matanga, Pandra Maria, and in the protest club, Briana Urjani, Chena, Muli, I can put like Kinan and the Londa, Randurunda, and I ingredient the single Snala is the Pananga, other Kelvi, other point of view. Randa on the Tamil Tiago, Tamil the Sabes Rongam Patina, Makal Protima, only Panikitong, and only Tirman Chitong, protest on the Yanamari, Idapanaburang, and the Maria Constitution Panaburang, only a design Panikitong, the Tavala, the Nampu Talavida, Talida went down, we put Pono and Napon Ramari Talida went down, upon Ramari Sonaga, Dung Lode, Yamari Pripono, Singular Tiago and Asulana. Among Yendamari Katamak and Oki for Norris La Patila, the Arbu was on the Mariana or a protester, the Arbu was on the Pora Marina, Majak and Tamil Slatins, the Arbu was on the Porta, the Lalo Urnu, Korea, the Urgency Saga Boga, the Pantamarisan. Are they very Tiago Pontar Kala, Anga and the Makale, Angla Tirman, Pora Dunga Tirman Chick Tom? I'm end up on the Ponal Tirman, I'm Edu, Munadi, Edu, my Sola Tavella, upon Ramari. Tiago Pontar Kala Sunday. Mona Kelvi and Anna, JVP, Nasla, the field and Namariana or Pananga. You put it in the Thrumu and the Thrumu Rani Likram singing on the Data, the Lena, America, Kazachi, Drika, Pantra, and Mona Kelvi. First of all, Kelvi, Tamils and Singalis will never unite. Yes, uh, uh, they will never reunite or they, they never join together. Uh, there is, but in during this uh, galley face protest, uh, they remember the Muli uh, in the protest ground itself and they showed sympathy towards Tamils there and they raised the slogans that we no more will support racism uh, like that. Uh, it has happened. So, uh, how do you see this? That's what he's asking. Um, yes, there are, the, I mean, uh, it is a di we need to see it as a dialectic uh, dialectically. I mean, the enmity and there is a uh, uh, there is a book written by Kolumbu assignment, written by Jay and Dixit. He is the ambassador to Sri Lanka, Indian ambassador to Sri Lanka during Indo Lankan agreement time. So he wrote a book. The enmity between Sinhalese and Tamils is very deep rooted. That is connected with the presence of uh, Tamil Nadu, Tamils in Tamil Nadu and South India, India and historically hegemony, those things which I, which I told in the beginning. But still, uh, as Lenin said that during the, comrade Lenin said that during the protests, during, I mean, something which has been there for hundreds of years, but during the protest, during the, uh, uh, during the phase of uh, aggressive class struggle, in a few days, people would get changed. So what, uh, I mean, there are two viewpoints. Tamils should stay away from the protests. That is one viewpoint. Whereas, uh, my, ourself and uh, Comrade Yagu, there is one uh, one camp we advocated that join the protest with single, uh, single is at this point. After. That is not, uh, a few. Uh, what I mean is, few were there in the Colombo. But I'm not, uh, I, I, didn't, I don't mean that. In the northeastern part of in Jaffna and in Trigonamalai, northeast part of Sri Lanka, there Tamils must have been led to come to streets and raise the same slogan, Gotabaya, go home, and uh, Gotabaya should be put in jail. You remove the army from the 
uh, reduce the army, remove the army from uh, northeast. So they should sort have of connected their demands. Removal of PTA is demand for both of them. Removal, I mean, uh, releasing the political prisoners are demand for both of them. Reducing the military is in the benefit of the economical recovery of Sri Lanka. So now there is a alignment. So we we can open a dialogue. We can open a dialogue, and those persons are leaders, newcomers who are in the protest will be the leaders in the in the in the next decade or our next 10, 20 years. So things will change. Always, I mean, we should hope on the at the same we should hope on the uh, change. At the same time, we should not have imagination. We should stand on the reality. There is a there is a contradiction and uh, unity in this point of view, but. Uh, it is like a stone in the water uh, that uh, society will be like that. It will not change. The enmity between Sinhalese and Tamils will not change. Uh, that is, I mean, uh, uh, that is uh, that is not the correct view, correct point of view. But the the unity which has been expressed in the Gali phase is not enough for it. It has to be it has to be educated more. They have get they have to get politicized more. And similar such politicization has to happen in Tamil side also. So that is how it has happened. It has to be developed. It is the beginning. It has to be developed. That is my point. And second thing is, it is to some extent similar. I mean, uh, the what I would say, there is a movie, Viva Zapata. All of that uh, Viva Zapata Mexican movie. So this protest has given an experience to Singhala masses. Yes, it is similar to Ara Spring. Yes, there is. there must be role of... Um, uh, imperialism in that some fund flows would be there and when military has to act when military has ret uh, retreat from acting that would be there yes they were they are able to operate this world manage the things they they were able to bring someone from power and put someone uh, who are their puppet that is happening that happened in the Arab Spring and it has happened in Kolumbu too but the takeaway of the struggle I would see is the experience of the protesters for these four five months that is more valuable and with that, they, even in the Arab Spring also, post some puppets, puppets placement in the power, there are realization, they started, the, the fight will continue. Yes, we fought the previous leader for the same reason, this person is also having the same policy. So we will fight against them. So they will get, already some Lavan have been killed the last few days by the intelligence in Sri Lanka. The, among the protesters. So now the white man will abduct the protesters. Now the military intelligence will kill the protest, uh, uh, those who are players in the protesters. So it will continue and they will learn from it and uh, so so we need not have to undermine. But I don't remember Tiago has said that Comrade Tiago has said that uh, uh, that we should not intervene and all. From the April 9 conference with all, I mean Kulatul Mani, Nadumar and Vaiko, we have welcomed the protest of Sinhalese and in, in fact last week I, I wrote a piece that Tamil Nadu government should have, instead of sending food packets, milk and those things, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister has, should have welcomed the Gali face protest. He should have said that a protesters is not only a thief, they are killers, they are criminals of uh, genocide, they are criminal war criminals. Tamil Nadu government should have, uh, should have raised solidarity to the Sinhala protesters. That is what, uh, I mean, our position along with uh, Tiago. And uh, uh, something you asked about JVP, what did he say? JVP, yes, JVP, I mean, trade unions, there is one, uh, one day strike from trade unions. Trade unions are with JVP. JVP, uh, uh, JVP has a whole, I mean, has some influence in the struggle and also Frontline Socialist Party, the students also had a strong hold in the struggle and other and up to 70 80 organizations small small organizations organizations are there in the struggle whereas the one one challenge is uh, for example the narayan sami naidu protest of uh, uh, farmers protest you would have heard about in 1980s in tamil nadu so he was a champion of farmers question he organized small farmers and they at that time uh, the strong protest after that he conducted election but he lost so this combining the uh, struggle politics of uh, struggle and the electoral uh, uh, electoral politics struggle politics and electoral politics that is an uh, i mean i mean uh, the question of revolutionary line in, in both in sri lanka and uh, india in sri lanka this jvp 1970 thousands of them were killed first uh, they are basically from oppressed caste Karayas community. 
even though the kumara the leader current leader of jvp is koigama he contested in kolumbu and he won but uh, traditionally and even today the major social base of jvp is karaya people communities and uh, those karaya youths have been killed in 1971 brutally getting the weapons and getting the support of both india and china and in also in 1989 again some 50000 youths uh, have been killed in jvp then only jvp completely become an open party and they contest started contesting the election so they they how they are going to i mean they uh, they are going to uh, i mean uh, i mean convert this uh, solidarity they have gained from this protest uh, into votes because this three vote is from parliament receipt okay. in 2004 like cpm and cpi jvp had more seats in the parliament but in 2019 they become they are only two seats in the uh, sri lankan parliament now 2 plus 1 the coalition there is one more woman was there only three voted for jvp leader that's different only when election comes you will be able to see but uh, the art of getting the votes that uh, i mean that they, they it's a question and uh, they have to face that we'll let's see i think you have asked these questions only uh, about jvp and uh, frontline socialist party and their question on uh, tamil's question is still in the same dot in, in quotes that okay we support tamil's cause and uh, self determination something power revolution they are not concrete enough for, concrete enough in the the in the in their proposal towards change in unitary constitution வெள்ள <laughs> 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 and uh, some 20% karayas and other communities uh, roughly just fight to uh, just uh, in roughly some uh, more or less from 5% only depressed caste castes i mean untouchable castes nalavar paraya like that so against the untouchability they used the arms communist party uh, used the arms in 90s uh, then from sanugadasa uh, rohana vijayavira split from sanugadasa and he said that you for the cause of tamil caste question you you used the arms whereas the overall revolution you are not uh, allowing us to go for an arm, arm struggle and he quit from the sanmudasa party uh, is a tamil leader and he started the armed uh, uh, insurgency or uh, revolution in 1970 so but in the nationality question uh, the communist parties over there they were not able to catch the movement in 1970s when they had some good hold in uh, uh, trade unions and they good hold in against caste system and all similarly now also bc we could see only jvp and frontline socialist party have some inclination left in left uh, inclinations uh, who are in the forefront the other uh, uh, lanka samaj party and the, the communist party they are not having much influence in the struggle and one new democratic group in tamil side they are having they, they are organizing few tamil youths and they are making them to participate but they are splinter group not much uh, influence in the masses of tamils less yes, but if there is a capable communist party they could have cast the moment even if uh, ldt supremo prabhakaran which stood the moment for a better time there is a one tirukural <laughs> ஒருமீன்ட்டன்ட் 
So now within the government, within the government, there is some struggle going on, but they were not demolished completely. Whereas in India, Andhra, Andhra Pradesh, Maoist movement, they were called for a negotiation in 2004, and they have they have been completely crushed. Similarly, in 2019, 2000, uh, LTT were also called for uh, a negotiation and table, and uh, they went into uh, the fighting, and they were uh, crushed. Uh, at the at the non-conducive global environment in the post 2001 uh, era, so now we we think that if LTT had been there at this point of time, just if you if they blow there, they could have uh, made uh, the Sri Lankan state to fail. But now one point is the Sinhalese are anti-governmental, Tamils are anti-state. But this anti-governmental protest will. Uh, logically evolve into an anti-state protest because the machinery of state, army, uh, constitution, and uh, bureaucracy. Once this anti-governmental protest, anti-governmental protest start gearing up and it persists, at one point of time they will use army. Now they are using intelligence uh, to kill the protesters. Now they are using the police to arrest the protesters. So this anti-governmental force should logically develop into an anti-state force. So then Tamils also uh, uh, fighting anti-state, anti-system. So Sinhalese also will gradually develop into, if they continue the protest, they will gradually develop into an anti-state forces. Uh, this will have a gradual development from anti-governmental to anti-state. I had a small, uh, I just start one question. Uh, so I, you mentioned IMF and uh, everything. So I, my question was like the these Western institutions, like how much of a role did these? Uh, can you make it a little bit audible? Uh, Sorry. Hi. Is this audible? Ah uh, yes yes yes. Yeah. So you mentioned IMF. Uh, yeah. So. My question was like, how much of these uh, Western institutions and everyone else, like, how much of a role do they play in what is trans, like, what has happened now, like, what is happening right now in Sri Lanka or anything that has happened in the past few years? So, like, yeah. Um, I mean, when, uh, initially, IMF, uh, I mean, in 2000, after war, Rajabakse, uh, Rajabakse borrowed. Uh, a huge amount from IMF. They put some conditions. They are not able to meet that condition. Then during the Sri period, again they uh, borrowed money from IMF. Now, last time, uh, July 9th, June, from June, June 20th to June 30th, 10 days, there is a group of nine from IMF who came to Sri Lanka and they met the leaders and everything. They put forth some conditions. Uh, but they didn't, uh, I mean, uh, 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 deliver any loans or they, they didn't come into any agreement. So IMF, uh, these institutions, IMF, World Bank, they are the uh, tools and uh, instruments of uh, Western imperialism. So they, I, I see that they have waited for uh, Rajabakse to go down. So Ranil has come now, who, who, who is on their side. So when to deliver the loan, when to, uh, till, uh, till how much time they have to wait, Till how much time they have to hold the supplies. Now the question is, they have money, but they don't have foreign reserves. So they are not able to export the oil, energy, fuel. They are not able to export the uh, essential items. So now when they open that into private players, they will be able, from multinational private players, they will be able to import. Now as soon as Ranil Vikram Singh took it to power, they come with an uh, announcement that, okay, once in a week you can buy some fuel and supplies are started getting into Sri Lanka, the fuel started getting into Sri Lanka. So certainly these institutions, I mean, this is, this. I mean, uh, you'd say there is a crisis post, I mean, everywhere now the economic crisis, uh, post corona crisis is there, everyone it is gearing up. That crisis has been used by Western camp for a change of regime. The protest is true, people are angry. Uh, I mean, people are angry towards the government. They were, they don't want the incapable or uh, this leader. So this anger and people's protest have been used by Western camp and manipulated to some extent for the change of regime. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so 
Seeing the quasi authoritarianism in our country is really a matter of concern, especially when we, the globe, are already witnessing recession. Can a more pluralistic pol- political order be the solution in sense to stabilize the destabilized world order? Can, uh, the, uh, can I see, uh, just repeat the last line, can? Uh, can a more pluralistic political order ah. be a solution? Okay. Pluralistic political order. Ah, uh, not only in the political, I mean, the three context, uh, one, one thing is, the first thing is, uh, I listed out the reason. First thing is, this, uh, this, uh, 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 I mean, uh, neo economic policy of, uh, new economic policy of uh, neo liberalization, globalization, that will uh, create the crisis. And uh, to facilitate that, uh, for the uh, uh, ruling class or uh, big players here and also international players only, this uh, uh, semi-authoritarian state form. form. State is taking a form of semi-authoritarianism. So this, this I mean, this, uh, I would say, this, I mean, the struggle against CIA is in fact a struggle against big capital. Struggle against Advani's uh, some court project is also str- is, is, is in other sense it's a struggle against uh, semi authoritarianism or uh, it's a struggle against uh, this uh, 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 I mean uh, exclusive political order. So they are inter intertwined and interlinked. So generally we see okay it's anti CAA protest is a protest for the democracy of minorities, but it is also whether the protesters know it or not, it is also a protest against the big capital. Or accumulation of finance capital, because this one nation, uh, this uh, in, uh, this exclusive nationalism, one state, one market is needed for both RSS and this uh, big capital, finance capital. So resisting either of them is mutually complementary to the resistance of other. So the thing is, it, it, political economy in Marx period, it is uh, Arasil Kurladara, political economy only. Now in US it has become 26 specializations, uh, diplomacy, international relations, geopolitics, uh, decision making like that. Uh, politics have become too much of specializations, but uh, the, the politics is like Arasil in the Kurladara, the Kayalum or Vitae. It's an art of handling economy. The definition of politics is it's an art of uh, 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 managing uh, economy. Uh, so, the, uh, whatever he has asked in multi, I mean, Panmitu, uh, pluralism in politics and uh, the real Atman is needed. Protest Panaga, protest Pente, Go Gothabaya, Raja Vexella, Vilatta, Bistrumu, Itanga, through Vikram Singham Poeta, Thrumu and the Vikram Sime, Rule Panam the Dare. Rule Panam the Tipinadi, Thrumu Adi and Ilamigal than Arakon, Silanga, Adi Adi Maritan Arakon, no Mela Idachi, Exaria, Silangan people, Malena, Economic La, Peri Crisis Agama, Nimil or Nilagal Pirupa. There would be some sort of support from, uh, I mean, uh, US-led camp, uh, financial assistance, giving supplies and some food assistance because the yeah, and, and, uh, food crisis has, has been awaited in the month of September. So, some uh, already India has given, the last seven months it has given around $4 billion financial assistance to Sri Lanka. So, to somehow US-led camp and uh, including India, they... Uh, might want to prevent the leadership of Ranil Vikram Singh uh, to support in the economic financial sense, but uh, uh, but that would not satisfy the people. The chaos, I mean, uh, the sort of uh, chaos over there, it will not satisfy. So uh, they might be able to kill few and arrest uh, few leaders 
and uh, some uh, uh, message was there one was abducted one important lead was abducted those things will have, will happen but they will organize uh, they will the resistance people from people side uh, a new generation i i i think a new generation uh, forces would come because uh, to somehow this dynasty politics uh, i mean this uh, these three four for the world of three major families that has come to an end it appears so so new leaders would come people have an experience they are good singular people they are going to so now they have changed the form of protest jvp is not uh, having an arm struggle now so now people is going to have the taste of their army earlier they are in sync with the army in sync with the singala this supremacy now they are contradicting with their own state their own forces so now they will have the taste of their uh, repressive laws the taste of their uh, army so so it will continue they will not get satisfied with ranil vikram singh he is not having the uh, mandate of people so they will say okay this parliament uh, only as elected the ranil vikram singh because parliament is still in the control of rajapaksa but majority members of parliament were still rajapaksa slpp sri lanka podujana paramuna so until this parliament is uh, parliament uh, should, should have been pushed away i mean Uh, new elections would happen, so uh, they will go towards that. Ranil go down means Ranil. Ranil has to go down. Then uh, the, uh, someone like Ranil Gotabaya's uh, uh, puppet will come. So uh, uh, they have to. They have to say we are not agreeing with this parliament. So they will continue. Let's see how it goes. But the do not settle down. Um, as they like, as they as Ranil wishes. Ranil also lost his image in, the, in that time. In some one week before the midnight, they sent the army and they cleared the protest place. So he lost the image among the people by disturbing the protesters. Next day, actually next day, they planned to get away from the protest. They wanted to give some three months time and then come again. But uh, there is a frontline news in Thailand. Uh, El- uh, Lanka, that uh, from the uh, from the direction of U.S. Embassy only, they have went. They sent the army the midnight to clear the, the protesters because only if they have the taste of army, next time when they come, they will they will their parents will hold the students. They will not come. See, when, when the, the the idea of giving an oppression, giving an party uh, charge, or giving an thing, I mean, putting some. நெருக்கடி கொடுக்கறது பிரஷர் கொடுக்கறது தட் தே ஷுட் இன்ஸ்டன் ஃபியர் ஆன் தி ப்ரொடெஸ்டர்ஸ் ஸோ தே தே கேவ் அ டேஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆர்மி இன் த லாஸ்ட் டே ஸோ நெக்ஸ்ட் டைம் வென் தே கம் தே வில் திங்க் ஸோ யூஎஸ் வாண்டட் திஸ் பட் தட் டார்னிஷ் த இமேஜ் ஆஃப் ரன் விக்ரமசிங்கே த அதர் சைட் ஸோ இட் இஸ் நாட் இட் இஸ் நாட் கோயிங் டு ஸோ ஸோ மச் சிம்பிள் ஃபார் எனி இம்பீரியல் பவர் I'm just going to read out the translation because the people on the Facebook live can't see the messages. Uh, the question that was asked before this was, since the return of uh, Ranil Vikrama Singhye, would the conditions in Sri Lanka still not remain the same? Sorry, we read out the question afterwards, but from now on, we'll <laughs> read the translation to them. So, on the live channel. Okay. அதே மாதிரி வந்து நிறைய கண்ட்ரில பரவு போராட்டமா இருக்கட்டும் லத்தீன் ஒரு நூறு கண்ட்ரில சில போராட்டங்கள் இருக்கட்டும் இதே மாதிரி போராட்டம் நடக்குது அதுக்கு எந்த ஒரு சொல்யூஷன்ல இருந்து அதே மாதிரி முடங்கிறாங்க வலதுசாரி பக்கத்திலே ஒரு இதா இருக்கு எல்லா நிறைய கண்ட்ரில ப்ரொடெஸ்ட் நடக்குது ஆனா திரும்பவும் அதே குள்ள இருக்கிற மாதிரி இருக்கு அது மீண்டும் வெடிச்சு வராத மாதிரி இருக்கு அதுக்கான காரணம் என்ன அப்படின்னு எனக்கு அதுக்கான காரணம் என்ன சொல்றது சும்மா சொல்லுங்க Yeah. Yeah. So, the question is there are protests happening uh, in many countries but there seems to be no end to this and it subsides after a certain point of time so what is happening there and why is this happening uh, there is some crisis i would say uh, there is a crisis of uh, 
philosophy and ideological crisis in the world even after the this 8 years of modi rule in india how come some someone have some philosophical base in any field they, are, they started asking this question how come it happened raghavan rajan in one interview asked that how come it happened in india's democracy so anyone who has some philosophical sense in some area raghavan rajan has his masters in economic uh, so he could think why well, how come it happened in india so how could it happen in india that is the question so not much discussion happened there so now we still we are relying upon the rise in uh, price rise in rice price rise in essential items with that can we topple the government like that but there is a larger ideological crisis one thing i could say and uh, uh, i may not be much successful in uh, answering all questions you ask <laughs> and you solution all questions in front of us so one thing is uh, ideological crisis is there second one is uh, the disintegration disintegration and uh, mm, disintegration in all aspects of life and the amai paakathirkku edirana or podu soolal adhaavadhu people uh, becoming an organization unless uh, see this the state we are living in in the world system of states state and the power with the state political power with the state and the mechanism they have to protect the insulations uh, it's very high they have developed in such a way that i mean like america is able to operate or manipulate people's uh, aspirations protest and they could bring down gotabaya and bring back ranil vikram singh so uh, such an hands on such an Uh, on the other side whereas this side we are very disorganized we are very disconnected we are very disintegrated and there is no coordination and there is too much of uh, uh, loss of faith towards ourselves uh, whom do we rely upon like there's so much of confusion on our side to fight against the system of state so unless there is an unless there is an uh, organization coordination based on a revolutionary ideology and theory then only we can challenge this so it uh, i mean uh, it's not i mean we need not have to get too much disappointed people are learning from the protest even once uh, it is a continuous we are in the era of imperialism so one one time it will go up another time it will go down in this uh, i mean uh, the lakhs and lakhs of years of human history is going towards far better civilized world civilized society so we are living in a very short period so in this period at least those who lived in 1960s they have dreams of revolution in the, the next decade they said that okay next 10 years we are going to have a revolution so we don't need job or don't need some someone who lost citizenship yeah, I, i talked to one person he said that yes they passed the act we thought that okay we would uh, bring in the revolution in few years so that act will become obsolete so we didn't apply for citizenship we didn't apply to come back to india so we are working for revolution that way after post second world war in the world uh, out of uh, two third of world is uh, socialist then so a lot of hopes were there in the post 90 era uh, 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 such hopes are not there we are lo- we are living in the days of miss hope but let's uh, bring a try to bring hope more that's that's what we could do and maybe this is not going to be an end like uh, some said in 90s after fall of ussr it's end of history it's not end of history so whether we were we ever our period that would be some question so we'll strive towards that uh, it will change certainly it will change and we should organize ourselves we should not be reluctant enough uh, to organize ourselves whether it's a small movement or big movement we, we are not uh, happy with parties or uh, something you you just 10 person join together and take a collective decision and do something collective decision collective action uh, so uh, let's let's practice for that so that's that's the uh, but there are a lot of opportunities with now this protest also the social media driven protests so now 
we have lot of opportunities also so we we have other side also better side also let's see thank you sir. i think uh, on that note since it's almost 7 o'clock we'll also wrap up um if there are more questions you all can maybe message us on um, social media i'll also share the links in the chat as collective bangalore and collective delhi for those who would like to stay in touch do message us so we can like keep you posted also on the things that are on my note my number anyone interested to discuss further you may note my phone number double line Okay, I think um <laughs> 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 